Okay, it is now two o'clock and we will begin this webinar. Um, I will go ahead and start with the um, introductions. My name is Michelle Martinez Vega. Um, I want to say thank you for um, you joining us today. Uh, today we'll be talking about teaching science in virtual learning environments. And this webinar is brought to you by IDRA's Equity Assistance Center South region, or as we refer to it, EX South. The IDRA EX South is one of four federally funded centers that provide technical assistance and training at the request of school districts and other responsible governmental agencies to build capacity of local educators and to ensure a more equitable learning environment for all students. Today's webinar, we'll be talking about online platforms, um, we will explore to teach science concepts virtually using EduCreations, Explain Everything, EdPuzzle, Flipgrid, Quizlet, and Padlet. These tools will be explained throughout the online webinar, and we will focus on Newton's Laws of Motion, a middle school science concept. Uh, again, my name is Michelle Martinez Vega. I am the Chief Technology Strategist for IDRA. I have the privilege of working on several different programs for IDRA, one of which is the Chief Science Officer Program, which I uh, work with with Dr. Stephanie Garcia, my co-presenter, and also the Valued Youth Program, with cross-age tutoring program um, for students uh, across the United States. Um, I have over 20 years of experience in designing and developing and administering technology training for teachers. Um, I am joined today by Dr. Stephanie Garcia, and I'll let her go ahead and introduce herself. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm IDRA's Education Associate. Um, I work especially in the um, STEM and gender equity areas, and so um, it's something I'm very passionate about. I've been in education for over 10 years. I started as a middle school science teacher, hence the um, topic today that I'm super passionate about. And um, I also trained pre-service teachers at a local university, um, teaching them on how to teach science. And then later doing some research work as an embedded education expert in the College of Engineering at our local university here in town. And so um, I'm very passionate about STEM education and STEAM education. And I'm hoping that you find some value in a lot of these tools and tips that we have today to really increase um, student hands-on experiences, even through distance learning and home learning right now. Um, and so I will go ahead and continue, uh, but we want to know more about you. So if you could in the chat box, if you're able to right now, if you could share your name, where you're from, and your connection to education, and um, share one distance learning platform that you strongly recommend to us. Um, we see this as a professional learning community. This is something where we're sharing six platforms that we find a lot of value in, but we would love to know your thoughts as well. Maybe there's something out there that's really worth sharing. And so please drop it in the chat box. Uh, we look forward to coming back to those responses shortly. While you're doing that, I'd love to share with you on the next slide some other webinars that you might be interested in. Um, IDRA, as you know, has put out weekly webinars, and so we have a vast variety of topics for you to explore. Um, connected to STEM and connected to this conversation, um, we have two webinars linked here for you to explore. Um, we have already talked about science learning for offline um, settings. So instead of today's topic of exploring science learning through virtual learning environments, we've already kind of covered what are some options for offline learning. So we encourage you to go visit that webinar. We also explored one of the platforms that we mentioned today called Explain Everything. We've already kind of explained that in a math setting. So we would really encourage you to watch that webinar that's linked here that says facilitating online math sessions. We'd love for you to check that out because um, we go a little bit more in depth on that platform in that webinar. Um, but we definitely wanted to mention how it could be used today. Um, so as Michelle mentioned, here are some of the platforms we're going to be exploring today. Um, for checking for understanding, we're going to be looking at Edpuzzle and Quizlet. Um, two wonderful platforms. For explaining concepts, new concepts or revisiting concepts, 
We're going to be using um, Edgy Creations and Explain Everything. And then student demonstrations, it's very important to check for students' understanding and giving them an opportunity to share what they know. And there's two really great platforms that students can use called Padlet and Flipgrid. So we'll show those as well. If you wanna go next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the chat box um, the link that's mentioned here on this slide. There we go. If you want to toggle kind of to our Google Doc that we're gonna be sharing and, and modeling here, um, I've created a Newton's Laws like online module just so that we all have a good frame of reference. I think that's really important is to establish like a good starting point and give context to what we're talking about. And so being a previous science teacher, um, I created a learning module. If I were to put myself in the educator's shoes right now, I would be using something like this where students have maybe a week to complete different tasks for science. And I have here that this is the third learning module. So it's a part of a series, right? So we're jumping in, not from the beginning, we're kind of going into more of reviewing concepts that have already been taught. And so this is really great to check out because this one like document, I think it's just two pages long, has embedded links that take students directly to each of their tasks. So you can see how you can use a variety of platforms that students um, get a variety of learning experiences from. And so it's really fun to just embed them here in a Google Doc and share this with your students and they can access it in their own time um, throughout the week, which is also very important. We know that asynchronous learning is one of the equity strategies for adapting to these like, you know, school closures and now distance learning environments for students. So task one is more of like, Usually it's a thought question, so students can like complete posts and responses by a certain day of the week. Um, but in this case, it's just students are going to be viewing an ed puzzle, and we'll go over it in a second, to check for current understanding of, you know, Newton's laws of motion. So once again, ed puzzle is a good platform to check for understanding or even to access prior knowledge if you're using it in the beginning of a unit. Next, we'll go into a second task, which is a little bit of like a direct teach moment where you are able to give some kind of reading passage, something for students to dive into to review a concept. And so here I linked um, just a simple reading passage from Botanica um, Encyclopedia Online and I put a reminder, hey, review your notes for module one because let's say they had that as part of their learning experience in the first module. And then secondly, they're going to use Educreations. I can't wait to show you that. Um, Educreations is like a whiteboard where um, you can use that platform to direct teach like a concept. Um, explain everything is very similar to that. And so um, we'll show you how to use that using Newton's second law of motion of um, calculating um, and, and, and uh, calculating for force using the formula force equals mass times acceleration. And so that, let's say, was already taught in a second module, but this is just kind of a review. And then going into task three, it, this is more of like a small group peer interaction, like students are demonstrating their learning thus far, and they need to be able to do that in their own creative ways, and they should be able to give feedback to their peers. And so looking at task three, this is an opportunity where you can use something like Padlet or Flipgrid to really give students the opportunity to share what they know in their own creative ways. Um, and so I'm excited to show you those two. And then lastly, you want to have an opportunity for students to reflect and review. Um, so we're using Quizlet uh, maybe as a way of reviewing vocabulary, different things like that, different concepts that maybe were tricky. They can create their own study decks and really prepare for maybe an end of unit exam or end of unit project that students will create for any type of formative assessment that's coming up. So that's a really brief walkthrough of this module. I just want to make sure once again to set context to all of this discussion. Um, and so now we're going to really launch into each of these platforms. And so I'm going to let Michelle go ahead and take it away as she's going to cover Edpuzzle. So Edpuzzle, as um, Stephanie already mentioned, it's a video lesson um, app. So um, 
It's awesome. I love it because I am a visual learner. Um, the key features are that you can use your own videos. Yes, I said it, your own videos. And you can also use videos that you already um, like to use in your classroom. Videos from YouTube or PBS or Khan Academy or really any of the videos that you already use online. Um, you can crop the videos to as long as you want. So sometimes you find a video that's really amazing, but it's like 30 minutes long and you only really need the uh, three minutes smack dab in the middle. Well, um, Edpuzzle will let you shorten it. So you can crop the video to just the section that you want. Um, you can also add voiceovers, which is great, especially right now during this pandemic, you know, we're, we're not seeing our students, we're missing our students and they're missing us too. I know they may not admit that, but they are. And so it would be great to have a video with your voice, not some stranger's voice, but your voice. And it'll remind them of being in the classroom. Um, also, you can um, add questions to the videos. So you can add open-ended question, multiple choice, you can add notes or comments. Um, and then it does integrate very nicely with Google Classroom. Now, this app is free. Um, but there are some limitations, and I do want you guys to know about the limitations on all the apps that we're going to be sharing right now. Um, and part of that is because it's not there. I don't want you to become frustrated because you're trying to make the app do something that it can't do, right? So I, I want you to know about these limitations. So you are limited to 20 videos. Um, what that's a lot of videos, right? And so if you find that there's an old video, like you've got to that limit, you've made 20. Um, you know, you can download it. If you don't want to download it, you can upload it to your teacher YouTube page. You can put it into your uh, Google account. And districts that use Google um, have pretty much unlimited. I mean, like there's like four terabytes or something to that effect of space on your teacher account. So you can always put it there. Once the video is on your own personal cloud storage, then you can delete it from Edpuzzle and now you have more space to make more videos. Um, the paid version will obviously give you more space. Uh, the paid version will also allow you to have customer support. Um, and then uh, as far as a wow factor, what um, I think is absolutely amazing about this particular app is that as your students are going through it and as they're answering questions and watching videos, you're gonna see which students are having difficulty with which concepts. So if you ask a question and they get the answer wrong, um, then you know that that student may need some reinforcement. If you ask 10 questions of your students and they get almost all of them right, but there's one section that they're getting all of them wrong, well then that's an area that you know that you can do some uh, a deeper dive into or spend more time with, right? Um, so um, as Stephanie may have mentioned already, this presentation is going to be available on our website along with the recorded video. So you're going to have all these links. So don't worry about like feverishly trying to write them down or anything like that. You're going to have access to all of this. Um, the cost for Edpuzzle, the basic is free. Um, there is a, a pro teacher account and school districts can purchase, purchase it. Um, I encourage you to contact your technology and training development department because you may already have access to this and you just don't know it. Um, so again, Edpuzzle, great tool. Um, it's free unless you want some of the extra bells and whistles, um, but um, let's go ahead and just dive in and explore it real quick. So I'm gonna show you the video that um, I created in, let me, let me, oops, let me pause this. Let me rephrase that. I didn't create this. I repurposed it with my own questions, right? <laughs> we do not want to reinvent the wheel. Um, a couple of other things before we actually de uh, dive into the video and watch it. If you see here on the bottom, there's these little droplets. Those droplets are questions. I can... I can, when I set up this video, I can add the closed captioning, you know, I can go full screen, but some really cool features here is that when I assign it, and I'm going to choose assign right now just so that you can see that, I can turn off prevent skipping. So if I've assigned this to my students and the students cannot skip through the, any portion of the video, they have to watch the whole thing. So I can prevent skipping. Um, again, I can turn on closed captioning. I can provide a due date. Um, and then I can add an entire class or individual students. Um, what's great about that is again, 
If you have students in your classroom, then as the students complete the video, you'll see that they've completed the video, and then you'll also see what questions they got right and which questions they got wrong. All right, so let me go back to the video. Let's see, Ed Puzzle. Sorry, I went a little too far. It's not a problem. Okay, so um, going back here, you'll see also that there are two questions that I've added. Even though there's four droplets, there's only two questions. The first question is a multiple choice, and that presents itself at 10 seconds. And then there's an open-ended that presents itself at 46 seconds. Um, the other droplets that I've added are actual just um, notes and comments that I wanted the students to think about. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video so you can see what we've done here. When people say that Isaac Newton completely transformed the field of physics, they really aren't kidding. Now we've already talked about his three laws of motion, which we use. So I stopped the video when she introduced the three laws of motion. And the question that I have here is what are uh, Newton's three laws of motion? So you'll see that there's the correct answer. And then there's a couple of wrong ones. You choose what you want. Um, I'll uh, read the third one because I think it's pretty funny. It says, when a body exerts a force on a second body, the second body gives up and does what it's told. Right, so, <laughs> but we know that that's wrong, but in the event that your student chose it and they click that uh, and then they click submit, they click that option, then it'll tell them that they got the question wrong. And then as the teacher, you can create feedback. So when a student answers it wrong, then you can tell them what the right answer is. Again, for this particular module, what we're doing is we are uh, using this particular activity as a, a check, right? We wanna know what they already know before we get into the lesson. All right, so then once a student answers it, looks at what the feedback is, they can continue. He used to describe how things move, but, but another of Newton's famous contributions to physics was his understanding of gravity. When Newton was first starting out, scientists' concept of gravity was pretty much non-existent. I mean, they knew that when you drop something, it fell to the ground. And from careful observation, they knew that planets and moons orbited in a particular way. What they didn't know was that those two concepts were connected. Of course, just like with motion, we now know that there's a lot more to gravity gravity than what Newton was able to observe. Even so, when it comes to describing the effects of gravity on the scale of, say, our solar system, Newton's law of universal gravitation is incredibly useful. And it all Okay, so here what we've done is we've added an open-ended question because we want the students to go and do a little bit of research, right? We want this video to be more than just a sit and get. We want them to do some research. So we want them to explain Newton's law of universal gravitation, and then they're gonna enter in their answer. This is my answer. And then when they click submit, because I've added feedback, they'll actually get the, um, the definition of it. And so again, this is another way for them to self-check. Right, continue. And it all started with an apple. Oops, let me just kind of fast forward. Equation that would accurately describe the way gravitational force made objects behave. Whether it was an apple falling on the ground or the moon orbiting Earth, Newton knew that however this gravitational force worked, it would probably behave like any other net force on an object. It would Okay, so here we have one more opportunity for the students to learn. So they've watched more of the video and now what I want them to do is learn how to use that equation. And so what they'll do is they'll go to the Khan Academy and I uh, provided a link and then they'll just click on that link and they can watch the video and then return to this. So um, that's all I'm gonna show of this particular uh, app for now. We'll go back to the presentation um, and get back to the Word document so we can explain the second second piece of it. As a, as a teacher, I just see so much value in that one. I did all my oohs and ahs earlier when I kind of looked at Michelle's presentation and I was able to see, um, gosh, how you can assign these videos. It's kind of like um, stop and jot videos if you're an educator and you've used that strategy where you're playing a video and then you have students stop and jot down their answer. 
Well, you can still do that virtually through online learning experiences from home, right? So you can still have these stop and jot questions and stop and jot reflections where students are able to submit their answers to you and you're going to be able to view that, view that as an educator. So I just see so much value in that. It's so important. Um, I think a lot of times um, Pearson or other textbooks might have these different online video tools, but they may not be accessible right now. So I just see so much value in Edpuzzle. I think that's a great tool to use. So moving on to task two, so they've had a moment to review, to check for understanding, check prior knowledge, and now we're going to get into a little bit of a deep dive into the second law of motion, which has a lot of math connection to it using the formula. So um, a great tool could be explain everything, which we already explained in a, another webinar, uh, but we're going to deep dive into educations because it's an, also another alternative to that. Oh, I think you're muted, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So um, as Stephanie was saying, EduCreations is an interactive whiteboard and screencasting tool. Um, I suggest using it on your iPad, but you can definitely use it on your computer. The reason I suggest using it on your iPad is because if you have um, an iPad pen, then it's easier to actually write everything down. Um, it, it, it'll feel more natural. Um, but the key features, again, is that it's an on-demand instruction in that you can share your lessons and you can record your voice. It's, it's again, very important. Our students are missing us. Um, I think it's important for them to get the assistance that they would normally get when they're in class uh, from us by us, right? Um, the wow factor is that there are a lot of features here and you can record and replay, handwrite, you can draw, you can insert images, lots of really cool features. Um, with the limitations, um, you are limited to saving one draft at a time. And what that means is that um, you can you can't have multiple projects working at the same time. You work on a project, if you wanna save it because you need to walk away from it, that's fine, but that's a draft, right? So then that becomes a draft that that's the only draft that you can have. You can have multiple videos, but you can only have one draft at a time. Um, also, it's not possible to edit the video within this app. Now, if you've ever heard the term app smashing, um, I know that's a fancy way of saying that you're just using multiple apps to accomplish one task. Um, so if you have an, a video editor, then you can um, edit it within a video editor, but um, this particular app will not allow you to edit it within the app. Um, the basic edition um, only allows you 50 uh, megabytes of cloud storage. So again, it's, if you want more than that, you'll have to purchase it, um, but you don't need to because you can download what you want. Um, now you can only export the videos through pro accounts, but yet again, you can app smash and you can take what you want out of this app and then delete. Um, those are things that we do not have time to get into right now, but of course, um, IDRA is a professional development organization among other things. And so if you wanted to get that type of training to learn how to, to really leverage these apps um, at the most cost effective way, then give us a call, we're happy to help. Um, all right, so edu creations, the basic is free. And that's everything that we're showing you has a free basic account. Um, and then there's the pro and the school account. So again, check with your technology training and development department. You may already have access to this and, or another interactive whiteboard that you just don't know about. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not mention that Zoom has a whiteboard app. So you, there are multiple ways of doing this, okay? So um, we'll go ahead and show you the sample lesson that we created with, um, let's see here, let me get out of this. Okay, with EduCreations. So um, Stephanie and I made this video and I apologize for the crazy looking. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, text, but it's a great video. So let me go ahead and hit play. Separate this problem right on the right side. Force equals mass equals mass times acceleration. So M times A. Good. And so now for acceleration, A equals. And looking at your triangle, you know you have to divide when the variables are on top of each other instead of next to each other. So it's F 
divided by m. Of course, divided by mass will get you, um, will help you solve for the variable a, which is acceleration. So let's switch it again. So let's say we need to solve for mass. So mass equals force divided by acceleration. So that's just a quick review on how to use this formula triangle to manipulate the formula to solve for any variable. So let's give an example here. Let's say that this word problem gives you um, the force and they give you the mass, but you need to solve for acceleration. So let's say the scenario says the force is 10 newtons and the mass is two kilograms. And it's asking you to solve for the acceleration of the object, right? So then you look to the right and you look at your formula triangle and now you're able to easily solve for acceleration. So acceleration equals then A equals 10 divided by two. And that's your force. And you can recognize it by looking at two units as well in the word problem, which would be newtons for force, kilograms for mass. So now acceleration equals five meters per second squared. So now you're able to, like I said, use this tool, this formula triangle to help you solve for any variable. It's a nice trick to help you when you get stuck with kind of moving over variables. So that video is a little less than three minutes long. You can see that we're not doing a deep dive into the entire lesson. We're just showing them this one concept. And sometimes that's what a student needs. They just need a refresher for one concept so that they can learn it, master it, and then move on. Um, I'll show you quickly how to create a lesson. Um, you just create your account and then you say new lesson. And then you're provided with this whiteboard. Uh, you'll see in the upper right hand corner that it has a record button. Um, and then you have just like a regular whiteboard in your classroom, you can use different markers. Um, so uh, if you wanna change colors, you just click on the color that you wanna use. You also have an eraser and then you can draw symbols. And then if you notice here at the bottom, you have this little icon for a photo. If I wanted to, I can click on that icon, locate a, um, an image that I want to share and insert that and then talk about that. Um, now, when, to actually record your voice, you wanna hit record and then start doing the lesson. If you do all of the um, writing and say I want, you know, I'm, I'm here drawing all over this. If I did that, but I didn't hit the record button, then none of that's being captured, okay? Um, let me go in and erase that. And I'm not erasing the picture because remember that's a picture. I'm just erasing the drawings that I've done. But if I hit record, then every single thing that I do is gonna be captured. And I'm just really quickly, right? Oh, it's not, it's 16, sorry. Hey. Okay, so, <laughs> and then I can actually just hit save and then I can save it and then it's gonna create a brand new video. Um, I'm not saving this, I'll just do start over, um, start over and then I'm gonna exit for right now. And then I'm gonna go back to my class. So um, in my account, um, I have my lessons, favorites, I can create classes. I have a class for IDRA um, for lessons that I wanna create. Um, and so if I go back to my lessons here, right? So this is the lesson that I wanna share with my students. If I scroll down, I'll see some new options here, right? So I can share it, I can add it to a class, and then I have my settings. So if I click share, then I'm provided with embed links and permalinks that I can use on my teacher website. So, or I can even add it to uh, Google Classroom, or I can share it on Remind. So um, again, you know, the digital divide is real, right? Um, we know that students do not have access all day, every day. So this is a great way to capture instruction, even if you're doing this live with a student via, uh, I'm sorry, with some students via Zoom or any other way, hit record. 
because then you're creating these lessons that other students can use, right? Um, and so you have a lot of options here. And then of course the statistics, um, you can see which students have uh, watched the videos, um, how many times they've watched it, and how much of the video they've watched, right? If they've only watched 95% of it, none of it, 20% of it. So if you have a student and she's like, I already watched the video, then you can come in here and say, well, yeah, Jessica, you did watch it, but you only watched 20%. You gotta get through the whole thing. It's only three minutes long, right? So um, we do have some options um, for educations and it is a really great way for you to explain concepts to students without you being physically with them. And um, pro tip, don't make them too long. Any longer than three minutes is gonna be like way too long for your students. Um, so I would suggest doing just bite-sized chunks when you're using this particular app. Absolutely, and just to echo that, um, thinking about the use of it in this time, um, I also think about virtual office hours. You know, teachers are having um, set times every week to just support students with any one-on-one -on -one instruction or small group instruction. So recording those little videos um, where you're helping with like these targeted skills development, I think it's gonna be really crucial to use some kind of tool like EduCreations or some kind of whiteboard feature that you can record and then share later. I mean, how awesome would it be if students, you hear um, that students are struggling with them um, a certain math concept or a certain skill, then you can just record and then send it out through Remind 101 and everybody has access to it right away. I think that's really, really cool about that feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into task three. So students have had opportunities to check for understanding. They've had opportunities to review concepts, especially those in which um, students are getting really hung up on something. So what about now the most important part is like, let's have students demonstrate that they understand a concept, right? So looking at Padlet, Padlet could be used to demonstrate one of Newton's laws of motion. So going to the Padlet that I created, students can create um, a post. This is like a very interactive, almost like a website that anybody can contribute to, um, but it has, I'll go into features later. It does have security and privacy features as well. I'll talk about that later. But let's say students um, are now required to post a demonstration of, of one of Newton's laws and they need to reply to somebody else's. So I, I love having like a post and a reply part because it gives students ownership of creating something, something of their own, but also to reply to somebody else's. So now we're starting to have some virtual collaborations. Um, so Padlet's really good for that because right away you can see my name. So pretend I'm a student and I found a video that I love that demonstrates Newton's first law. Notice how I didn't describe the application, and that's part of the TEAK. It's very important to describe the application of Newton's Law, but they're going to do that on somebody else's. So let's say Michelle posted this one and her name's above. I can go ahead and click on reply, and I can reply to her post and describe the application of the video to Newton's Laws or vice versa, right? So I think it's really crucial to have this opportunity and it's all very multimodal. So what I did was I included as part of the instructions that the, the students post video links. So if you click on, for example, this video link, um, it's a YouTube video that I embedded within SafeShare. Um, SafeShare is really great. I'll talk about that in a second, um, but you can go ahead and play it. I think it's like 20 seconds long or something. Okay, so of course I use Spurs as an example, okay? Uh, we are in San Antonio. <laughs> uh, but the, the object here as a student, putting myself in a student's shoes, it's like, okay, well an object at rest or in motion will stay at rest or in constant motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. And Tim Duncan is that unbalanced force blocking that shot, right? And so, you know, it's something fun. So me as a student, I can say this is my understanding of Newton's first law of motion, but I'm not explaining it, right? So I'm, my hope, my, my goal is that maybe Javier in class can come over here and push the comment button and say, oh, I love this example, I love the Spurs, Tim Duncan's the boss, right? And then he can go ahead and put 
his explanation of why this demonstrates Newton's first law of motion. So it's a nice interactive way where, you know, you're still doing it by peer. You can make this way more coordinated where you assign a student um, a law. So uh, Sarah, for example, you're going to take on Newton's third law and all this could be in the instructions within the module. So this, you can explore this a little bit later. Um, I do recommend um, going back. I kind of mentioned it super briefly. If you're going to be using YouTube, um, I strongly recommend you filter it through some other platform. So like um, Michelle's already demonstrated some of those platforms where you can embed a YouTube video and it blocks out all of the ads and the interrupted ads. Um, Safeshare.tv is one of those that I strongly recommend, especially if you're teaching those younger grade levels. You can't really control YouTube and what pops up. So I embedded all these YouTube videos, but I just did it through Safeshare. So it would block out all of the advertisements and um, pop-ups that might come up, right? So that's um, something that is a good little tip, especially for elementary students and teachers, um, but middle school and high school too. Um, so it's free and you just insert the Vimeo or the YouTube link, you create an account um, and you can start saving all these archived videos. So um, going back though to the module, that's one explanation um, or that's one tool I should say that students can demonstrate their understanding. I wanted to go, could you actually go back to the Padlet real quick? Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to show um, the features because I didn't really get to do that because um, I've kind of made up an example. But I wanted to show you that when you push the plus sign, like Michelle right away, because I made this public in the bottom right, um, you can create a post and click and drag it anywhere. And I want you to notice you can upload videos as well. So let's say students already created a video, they can upload their own video. It doesn't have to be an external video. It could be one that they made, uh, recording themselves doing an activity from home. Um, you can upload um, different audio clips, web clips. You can upload pictures and things like that. So I just wanted to briefly show you that um, it's really user friendly and very multimodal. So um, if you could go back to the slideshow, um, I wanted to show, yeah, that's a good idea too, to use the search feature. I wanted to show a little bit more about Padlet before I move on to the next one, Flipgrid. So like I said, it's super easy, very user friendly. Um, because of the settings, you can make them public to everybody so families can even comment. So it's really great for family engagement in the classroom. Um, and, you know, students are getting really creative because they can add whatever content they want. Um, but you can be very explicit about what you're expecting too. So lots of good features. Um, I used to use this a long time ago and I didn't like it that much because their privacy and content filtering was really poor. So students could write poor comments or they can negative comments or they could um, even use profanity or, or link things that they shouldn't. Uh, Padlet has done an awesome job of upgrading their features so that you don't have to worry about that as a teacher. I know that was like my number one worry. And so I really appreciate the changes that they've made. Um, I think that once you have a, a paid account too, you get even more features. So, but you don't have to pay for it. Um, I have a free account that I've been using for years and I think it allows up to 22 Padlets. So I've reached my capacity, but I just go and delete a really old one that I don't need anymore. And I just create a new one in its place. So I haven't had to buy a subscription. Um, I, I do see an upgrade feature for myself where it's like, hey, $8 a month, you'll get all these features. Um, but I do know that they have like free 30 day trials right now with, you know, remote learning, um, all, all these really great incentives are out there. Um, but definitely look into the different ways you can use it. Um, I think that, um, um, you know, there's many interactive options and this device is very capable on many, like across many different platforms and devices. So it's, it's really user friendly. Um, these are some of the information that I found. They have like a business plan of Padlet and a teacher, they call it like a backpack plan for educators. So this is kind of the cost breakdown. Maybe your school already has it though. I love that Michelle always mentions that because it's, it's you know, I paid for things so that I didn't always have to pay for um, because I didn't ask, right? So this is something that's a good reminder because it's possible your school already has a subscription. In. So um, moving on to Flipgrid, um, if we could go back to the online module, um, Flipgrid um, is so cool. 
Um, I'm the biggest fan of Flipgrid, but I'm so novice. So I'm not going to come off as an expert yet because I haven't gone through the training. I'll talk about their amazing support system that they have online um, to support educators. But let's say that you, as a teacher, you have like, for example, middle school, especially, I have like eight different class periods. Let's say that one of my class periods, they're really familiar with Flipgrid. And so for that class period, I want them to use Flipgrid to demonstrate their learning. So students can demonstrate one of Newton's laws of motion from home using random household objects. So within their video, you know, you can have a rubric that goes along with this that's more explicit, but at least their name, what law of motion they're demonstrating, and then how their demonstration applies to the law. They have to make that connection really clear so they can use Flipgrid to do this. So if you follow the link, it'll take you to a Twitter response. Um, so I'll go ahead and let it play. I think you have to push the unmute option. The challenges in which I faced creating my balloon car out of a water bottle was one, I... So if you wanna pause it, cause it'll keep playing, but... The challenges in... What this shows is, um, cause I don't, you know, I didn't need to go in and create a whole classroom on Flipgrid and all these things. But if you just like, for example, go on a deep dive like I did on Twitter <laughs> and you just go to their page, um, Flipgrid is really good at sharing like educators work and sharing student work. And I love this assignment because it relates to Newton's laws. A powered car like this could easily demonstrate Newton's third law of action reaction forces. And so, you know, it's, it relates to this module for sure, but students are recording their own video from home all within Flipgrid and it's the most like easy thing ever. And you can record it and share it later as well and just kind of showcase your students work um, through your school Twitter accounts or whatever like that. But um, I wanted to show you, I'm going to try to share my screen if my computer will let me just briefly to show you my grids to show you kind of more of like what Michelle did. Um, let's see, I wanna make sure, my computer's been a little slow today. Can you see it, Michelle? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So I, even though I'm not a classroom teacher, I got to create a free educator account, which is fabulous for my student program that I run at IDRA called the Texas Chief Science Officers Program. So your grid is like your class. And so I have two practice classes here, one in which is um, a class where my, my students, my middle school and high school chief science officers are interacting. So once you have a classroom set, you'll have like a class code and all these things, and you can create topics that really uh, bolster discussion on the students' end. So the students will be able to post um, a reply to some kind of topic. So for example, uh, just to get your feet wet, it's nice to use their default um, post, which is like, just say hello, so students can explore the platform. So once you have a topic, you can have the instructions here um, to what to include, any kind of expectations for the video quality and what should be included. And students can really easily respond by just creating a Flipgrid response. And it kind of looks like this. My computer's a little bit slow today, um, but this is one of our shyer students who um, doesn't really want to show his face. So he used um, emojis to kind of help cover up. <laughs> and you can add stickers and you can add audio. And it's just really user friendly. Teachers and students are able to use it um, very easily. And um, it's just super user friendly. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my, sharing my screen, but I wanted you to see on the teacher end, we can go back to the PowerPoint so I can explain a little bit more about Flipgrid. But like I said, it's absolutely free and the features are so fun. Students are having so much fun creating their own videos. Um, you can use it for any content area. So I'm thinking about science, I'm thinking about students doing at home STEM demonstrations. And then that shows me that they understand the concept that they can demonstrate and present it well, right? But you can also think about storytelling, um, you know, students interviewing family members. I mean, just really beautiful ways that you can use this platform. Um, and uh, like I said, it's free. It's completely free. It's Microsoft based. So it integrates really well with Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom. 
even Canvas and some other ones I was researching, it has really great screen recording and augmented reality features. So um, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's really worth taking a dive into. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's just really simple. Students can also upload their own videos. So like some of my students, they are very handy with iMovie. They've been practicing it all year, but Flipgrid's really new. They could still upload their video submission so that it has that nice thread for the teacher use and for the students to reply to each other's videos. So it still organizes their videos that they're creating in a really user-friendly way. Um, but I have to say, there's a lot to learn with Flipgrid. Um, I've been trying to learn on my own and learn as I go but there are so many features I know I'm underutilizing. Um, and, but they have really great like um, certificates that you can earn as a teacher. So you can go through and earn level one certificates, level two and so on. So um, they have a really great support page and they have really great examples and templates that are already created for you. Um, you just have to know how to use them though. And you have to know how to get them into your, the hands of your students. Um, so that's a little bit about Flipgrid. There's a lot here that you can go over. Um, and then lastly, we'll wrap up our module with like a review and reflection moment, really emphasizing vocabulary, because we know how important that is in science instruction, um, really in any instruction, but mostly in science instruction, vocabulary is key, especially with our students who are English language learners. So I'll kind of stop and have Michelle pick it up with Quizlet. Right, and um, something else, uh, Stephanie, that I wanted to add um, about Flipgrid and Padlet and some of the other things that, that you were just mentioning is that what we're doing is we're, t we're, we're, we're helping the students or providing a platform, I should say, for the students to become creators versus just consumers, right? And that's a really important skill for them to learn, right? Because there is so much out there on the internet, um, but them actually creating, and I love Flipgrid for that. You know, I mean, there are so many different uses for it. It's, it's as you mentioned, I mean, the students can go in there and create videos, or they can just post a picture and then create their voice. Because, you know, we know that students um, may feel uncomfortable being on camera. I mean, we're uncomfortable being on camera, but we're adults, so we don't get a choice, right? <laughs> So, um, but, you know, we want to provide those options. Um, we also want to provide students the options to um, create a video and have the opportunity to edit it and then post it when they feel really good about it. And we know they're creating content on social media. So let's have them use those skills and create content for educational purposes. So I, I really love everything that you said about Flipgrid and Padlet. I, I, I'm right on. Um, okay, so as a student, um, as Stephanie mentioned, um, we're going to look at Quizlet now. Um, let me go ahead and go back to the presentation just so we can kind of look at some of the features that Quizlet has. Um, Quizlet is a free website. It was actually created by a student. Uh, of course, now he's in his 20s, but he created it when he was like 15 years old because he needed a steady deck. He needed something that he could use that uh, kept him entertained um, while he was learning. So it is a free website. Uh, there are a lot of learning tools. There are millions of study decks within Quizlet. So I, I invite you to um, have your students explore. Maybe they can find a study deck that, they're, that they really enjoy and that really helps them and that they can share with their fellow students versus you having to create one. Um, but teachers can create them. Um, they, so you have the flashcards, um, you have the learn, uh, um, which is like a track your correct and incorrect answers, which is good because again, as you're um, doing your self-testing, you wanna know where you're lacking because then that's what you can focus your study time on versus uh, studying everything and even the stuff that you do know. Um, as Stephanie mentioned in science, it's super important to know your science vocabulary. So there is a, a, a speller option um, and then you can do your own self-testing. Again, this is a great way for students to do their own self-check. Um, Limitation-wise, you do get advertisements with the free account. Um, and free accounts don't allow you to, to track the student progress. The students track their own progress. Again, this is about them. Um, but the paid account, and I'm just going to jump over to that, that slide real quick, um, is $3 a month. It's $35 annually. Um, I think I spent more at McDonald's the last time I went. 
again, I'm not trying to tell you to spend money, um, but uh, if you do, this is really affordable. But again, check with your school district or your campus, they may already have it for you. Um, wow factor, Quizlet Live. Um, we're not gonna go over that, but when I, when, wow is, is an understatement. Quizlet Live is so much fun and you do not have to be in the same space to use it. Basically what happens is you pick a study deck or create a study deck and on the bottom, it'll have an option for live. You click it, what'll come up is a code and all of your students where no matter where they're at can click, um, type in that code when they go to Quizlet and then they'll all be in the same game at the same time. And um, you can create teams or you can have students um, play individually. If they're playing individually, whoever gets the right answer first is the winner of that question. Um, but again, it's tons of fun. And right now in this environment, um, I think it'd be amazing if you were able to send a remind with the link to the Quizlet Live and the code, and then all your students could play at the same time, even though they're all at home. Again, I think it's a tremendous, tremendous resource. I love it. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and actually go live to Quizlet. Let's see, all right. Do, 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 add puzzle. I might have closed it. Good thing that we have our links. Let's see here. Okay. So I'm gonna go to um, my Quizlet account, right? And so you have your teacher account and when you're in your teacher account, you can look at your study sets. Again, that's anything that you've created. Um, but I went ahead and I just opened up Newton's Law because again, we're the whole theme today is Newton's Laws. And right now it defaults to flashcards. And flashcards, you, you know what flashcards are, right? You see one side, it tells you what it is, so friction. When I flip it, it gives me the um, definition of what that is. And there are 15 cards in this set. So the next one, I can go to wait, click it, and then it tells me what it is, a body's relative mass, right? Um, learn, if I wanna choose that option, I can go here. And then it's gonna ask me different questions, right? So there's 15 questions, I'll just say you got it. And then I have to select what is kinetic energy. Energy and motion. Okay, I was gonna say, I don't know. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so, so you see that this That's is- cool. Your, yeah, so instead of the flashcards where you're reviewing, now you're, you're taking your, what you reviewed and you're applying the knowledge and saying, do I actually know it? And it's tracking it. Yeah, and so, and then you can, uh, there are other features here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I wanna play some games. Um, so I'll, let's go ahead in the match game. And so when you click match, you just click the start, and then you're gonna see all of the flashcards essentially, and now you've gotta uh, match them. And you'll also see the time here. So the faster you do it, obviously that's kind of fun for the students to see how quickly they can do it. I mean, as parents, we know that kids are constantly telling us, time me. So, <laughs> so um, that's cool. You just so like, nope, I got that wrong. Okay, the resistance of one surface or object. Friction. Friction. So that, let's see here. I think it's on the right. I can't see. Oh, there. The screen, but I think it's it was hidden. Okay, so cool. Strength. I like that. Um, let's see. That's force, I believe. Yes, and so as you can see, as we're getting them right, they're going away, and it's just slowly but surely leaving us with the rest of the questions. That's fun. So let me go back. And then gravity, this one's a little bit more difficult, but it's still fun. It reminds me of Galaga or something like that. So Stephanie's gonna help me play this game. <laughs> so if I click it, it'll at, um, say, it's, let's start. And so I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go easy and just say, let's go, start game. And so this asteroid will come up and what is Newton's first law? Ooh, uh, body in motion stays in motion. That's the thing. You have to like spell it just right. And then you have to make sure that you know the response. Um, so or yeah, it could have been inertia on that one. It, I just don't know what the response is. Okay. Like, right? So, <laughs> so um, it gives me exact for you to get that asteroid. <laughs> exactly. But again, it's, it's, it's really That's cool. fun. 
it keeps the, the kids on their toes. It doesn't give them a lot too yeah. much time to overthink. And so I love it. Um, I'm going to click on live even though we're not going to play, but because I want to show you a few things. So um, if I create the game, it's going to ask me if I want to play in teams or individual. For right now, because everybody is in different places, I suggest that you play individuals. If you were in teams, that would be amazing if you were in the classroom, because then what you could do is you could, uh, it would automatically create the teams. So you wouldn't have the student saying, I want to be on her team. I want to be on her. No, we don't get that choice. The, you just put all the students' names in here, and then what will happen, it will say, okay, these, this team is called the giraffes, this team are called the elephants, and then the students can get up, move to their respective teams, and then uh, the game's going to start. So if I hit individual, because that's what we're going to do, let me go ahead and just select, and then I'll say let's play, but again, we're not really doing this. Oh, it's like Kahoot. So did you see this code that it gave uh, yeah. it was really briefly, but that's the code that you're going to need. And so you'll share that out along with the link to your students. And then you as the teacher will see them coming into the game. So you can wait to start until you see all the kids come in or as many as you want, right? If only four come in, that's fine. Because again, we can't control that right now. If you yeah. were in the classroom, however, and you had chosen individual, you would see that you had 25 students and you would see that 10 joined. You'd be like, all right, where are the other 10? Let's get in here. This isn't, uh, this is an option cool. to play. So um, lots of really fun ways of, of doing that review and, and, and really solidifying the learning that we've done in all the other pieces of the module. And that's two things to add to that is, she didn't have to create that slide deck. She just Googled the concept and she found a teacher's already made or a student's already made um, slide deck or terms with their definitions. Um, I really like how that person included some pictures. Pictures are really important for all learners um, to associate with the words as well and with the definitions. And so you can share, the, there's a sharing link in the bottom and you can just share that link to all the students. So sometimes our, our students are really wanting like study guides and things like that, that usually are teacher made. Usually those aren't already given to us by, uh, or within like curriculum guides and things like that. So if you have a study guide or something that um, students are asking for, you can create one and share it. That's what I used to do for our end of unit exams, or our students can create their own with some guidance from the educator. So like what Stephanie said, yeah, I mean, I went ahead and I just did another search for Newton's Law here, and then tons and tons of um, study sets come up. And what you'll notice here is like this study set only has five terms, right? Whereas if I scroll through it, this um, study set has 31 terms. So you can go through wow. and see how, um, you know, what, how in depth some of these study sets are and or how or how simple they might be so again you can go in here and 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 pick what works for you and your students or yeah. you can task your students with creating their own study sets which again yeah. it takes them from being consumer to creator and you can they can use their own pictures they can use their own examples similar to what that young uh, gentleman did on the flip grid right so he created his own images and then he inserted those so it would be you know really great to do that and and of course you can always repurpose one you can copy a study set so let's just say i i open this one it'll give me the option to save it but then i should let's see here oops there you go. So um, I can print it, I can export it. There's all kinds of things that I can do with this particular study set, or I can add it to my class. That's good. Yeah, right. that's wonderful. So lots of options with Quizlet. Um, I, I haven't used it. I think I used it a very long time it's ago, so I didn't realize that, um, I didn't realize that um, you could do it almost like Kahoot, where they join in and do a live game. That's great. So um, in closing, um, you know, these are, I think you went over those features already, right? I don't want to talk over you. I did. I did. Okay. No, we're good. Awesome. So um, we'll open up for any questions that we have. Um, I know we have um, our friend Javier from Wichita Falls. We have our friend Sarah 
from San Antonio River Authority Foundation. And so if you have any questions, um, feel free to unmute yourself or you can drop something in the chat box. We'd love to interact with you. Um, so we'll give you a second to maybe join in. Oh, thank you so much, Javier. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Gracias. And then Sarah, if you have any questions, we'd love to support you. I know being that you are um, out of school time, um, being that you guys are a local um, um, like organization here in town, you do a lot of wonderful educator, um, you develop a lot of educator resources for the classroom use that have a real world application. So if you need any um, support as well, let us know. Um, drop it in the chat box. We'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, so in closing, just to repeat um, something we mentioned before, we do have teacher academies. So if you need specific support, um, if you're watching this, maybe it's recorded and you're watching it at a later time, we have lots of support that we can offer from IDRA, different online training sessions um, to help you support your online, offline uh, learning environments. Um, please feel free to contact our director of operations if you're interested. Go next. We have also um, a couple resources we want to share with you. We have our very own YouTube page with all of our helpful webinars as well as a webinar hub that I also dropped in the, uh, I dropped a link in the chat box for you that takes you directly to this page that has all of our resources. We're constantly creating new content to support educators. We have policy updates translated in English and Spanish. We have all of our recording webinars that we've been doing every week. Some are live, some are not. So feel free to always keep um, checking that website um, to see what, what is out there that's new content, that's something that might be interested for you um, to look at later on. If you can uh, join it live, that'd be great. Make sure you register every week for our webinars or watch them at your own convenience here on our YouTube page where they're housed. So um, feel free to follow us on um, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. We have so many updates that we're always posting, so it'll help you kind of stay up to date of what we're doing. Um, we also have our newsletter that you can subscribe to, as well as our e-news. Um, so we have all these great resources that we're always publishing and sharing, and so stay connected with our IDRA family. Anything else you want to add, Michelle? Thank you for participating. Thank you for joining us. And we hope you found uh, some valuable information here. And you don't have to know everything, as Stephanie said, you don't have to know everything about a particular app. You just got to get in there and play and see how it's going to work for you and your students. And um, again, if you need support, we're here for you. Thank you again so much for uh, joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.